Good morning and welcome back to our garden. Today we're going to be talking about crop rotation and companion planting and whether or not either of them are actually necessary. Let's go. So first, let's talk about crop rotation in your home garden. Now crop rotation is simply growing plants from the same families in different areas each year. Different plants in different plant families demand different nutrients and they demand different conditions. So logic tells us that growing the same plants or the same plant family in the same area year after year is going to completely deplete the nutrients from that area of the garden and you won't get a good crop after you've depleted those nutrients. So keeping those nutrients in the soil is important because a healthy plant with the proper nutrients will fend off the diseases on its own as well as suppress the bugs because the plant is incredibly healthy. The bugs attack sick plants. But there is a very strong argument that you do not need to rotate crops in a small home garden or even on a small organic farm and here's why. Well, it's simply because the soil degradation on a small organic farm, and especially in a home garden, just probably does not exist. Those crop rotation rules that have been in place for years and years, you know, rotating every five years, don't plant the same thing in the same field every five years, were made for large farming operations. Now those large farms have thousands of acres of the same crop. That is a serious monoculture. And a small garden like this is a very plentiful polyculture. I have probably 15 to 20 different vegetables and fruits planted in this garden. So this polyculture helps to keep down disease and bug pressure that otherwise would rear its ugly head in a large farming operation. So here's what's happening in a small garden or a home garden is you are constantly adding new fresh material, new compost and new nutrients to your planting beds. That is going to pretty much completely negate any soil degradation of nutrients from one type of uh, fruit or vegetable in the bed and you do not need to rotate that crop every single year. If you're constantly adding rich organic matter to your beds, you do not have to worry about rotating the crops. So if you want a healthy garden with healthy plants, less bug pressure, then feed your soil. Now, of course, there are plants that like a more acidic soil, they like more alkaline soil, or they like a more sandy soil, or a soil that's more heavily uh, based in organic matter, but you will figure that out. The plants will still thrive in your garden if you're feeding that soil every single year. And actually not every single year, every single season, because if you live in an area like I do, you're gonna have two growing seasons per year. Now that's a perfect segue into talking about companion planting because you may want to rotate some crops every single year, like legumes. Legumes do something very special and that is fix nitrogen into the soil. So if you have plants like say cruciferous vegetables which are heavy nitrogen feeders, then maybe planting peas or beans in that area the season before will assist and help out those broccoli or cauliflower the next season. And right here in this area, even though they haven't come up yet, except for our spring English peas, we have the three sisters planted. That is a very famous trio, companion planted trio. It's a Native American technique where you plant corn, squash, and beans in the same area. And I'll tell you why that's done in a second. So let's talk about what companion planting is. It is a method of planting different kinds of plants in the same area so that they share mutual benefits. And that makes the plants more productive in having complementary characteristics. Now those benefits include sharing nutrients, increasing the number of pollinators, increasing the number of beneficial insects, and physical characteristics like shading the ground to suppress weeds, or shading plants that need more shade. It can also help in conditioning the soil like we talked about with peas and beans, the legume family, 
where they're fixing nitrogen in the soil. Or things like carrots and beets that actually break up harder soils and bring nutrients from down further below in the soil. Now you do also have to be careful what you plant next to one another. Friends versus foes in companion planting is important. And we're gonna go through just a few of them because the list is actually endless. There are some great companion planting charts that you can go look at, and I'll link those in the description below. So let's talk about the most famous of all, the three sisters that I mentioned before, corn, beans, and squash. So firstly, the corn is gonna grow tall. It's gonna provide a trellis system for your beans to grow up upon. And then the squash has really large leaves and it does a great job at suppressing weeds. It shades the ground and suppresses all the weeds around those beans and corn. And then thirdly, those beans are gonna provide nitrogen for your heavy feeders like your corn and they're all gonna work in harmony with one another. And that's the beauty of it. Now let's talk about a few other pairings that are either good or bad. And I wanna make sure that you're not getting stressed out about this because there are way more good pairings than there are bad plantings. So if you happen to have one thing next to another that's really not supposed to be there, do not sweat over it. So a great example are corn and tomatoes. They fight over the exact same nutrients in the soil and they both put down a fairly deep root. And additionally, with corn and tomatoes, hornworms that usually you see on the tomatoes love both corn and tomatoes. So if you're planting them together or next to one another, you're gonna have increased bug pressure, insect pressure, on both of those crops, and you could end up losing both of them. So if you separated those in the garden, then you may lose your corn but your tomatoes could survive because it's on the total opposite side of the garden. But remember, if you're using good soil management practices and you're also out there in your garden every day keeping an eye on things like you should be, then you're not gonna have an issue. We hunted hornworms in this video up here. It was a lot of fun, my daughter enjoyed it, and it's a good way to do it. Also, you can use a black light. Now let's talk about one of the biggest foes in the garden that you've probably heard of, and that's planting allium plants next to legumes or beans and peas next to onions and garlic. Beans are actually a plant called an allopathic plant. And what that means is they put down into the soil certain biochemicals that are toxic to other plants. Or those biochemicals will act as a growth inhibitor for other plants. And one of the plants that's severely affected by that are plants from the allium family, leeks, onions, garlic, etc. So I really want you to look up allopathic plants figure out what those are. There's not too many of them, but peas and beans are one of them. So be careful with those in your garden. But at the same time, those peas and beans are fixing nitrogen in the soil, which is beneficial for a lot of other plants. So just pay attention to the pairings and you'll be fine. And one of those positive pairings are actually beans and carrots, which share nutrients between the two and actually help promote growth between the two. The last one I'm gonna mention is garlic and asparagus. Now you can see, Mine are planted probably 40 feet apart from one another. And that's because certain things contained within plants from the allium family, like the garlic, will completely inhibit the growth of asparagus. Asparagus, gi asparagus gives up really, really easily in its growth. So it's really important actually to keep asparagus separate from almost everything else. There's very few things you can plant next to asparagus. I think dill and parsley are two of them, but Asparagus needs to be a loner and have its own area. So this is a great example of having a plant in your garden that is gonna be beneficial in a different way for your plants. This plant right here is called salvia. It's a member of the sage family and it puts out these gorgeous, gorgeous purple flowers. And one thing it does is attract a lot of pollinators. The bumblebees love this plant. Here's another plant that's also very important for your garden in that it will help keep away bad insects, and this is oregano. So any herb really is gonna help to deter, through their smell, uh, a lot of bad insects. Now I do have to say one thing about herbs in your garden. They can get out of control really, really fast. We actually have walled this one off from the end of our bed because it was growing back into the bed and taking over completely. But the benefits from them are really great. And just remember, planting non-edibles in your garden is almost just as important as planting your edibles because those non-edibles are gonna assist with 
your fruits and veg. Now something we haven't planted in the garden yet this year, but we will and we always do are marigolds and nasturtium. You can actually eat those flowers, but what those flowers do is not only attract pollinators, but they also attract beneficial insects and through their smell, they ward off pests. Now I want you to keep in mind that those planting distances that are printed on the back of those seed packs are more for larger operations. You can actually plant things closer together and they do just fine. And remember, planting those companion plants close to one another is really gonna benefit both plants, kinda like our beets and peas down here. Now, I also want you to remember that sometimes a weed is not a weed and it can be beneficial to your garden, like a dandelion. Now remember, not only do dandelions attract a ton of pollinators, they're also edible. Some people even plant fancy Italian dandelions, but the common dandelions are just as good, especially for the roots in making coffee. So as you can see, crop rotation is important, but it's the context in which it's in. But companion planting can be very important and beneficial for any garden. Now go click on this video playlist, which gives you about 50 different topics on gardening in our orchard, and I know they're gonna be beneficial to you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.